Hey guys, Classique here with the second edition of Artifact Heroes and their Dota 2 counterparts. Today we're going to look into blue heroes. Monday I released the red one, if you haven't checked it, I strongly suggest you go right there. And if you do like artifact content, please subscribe for more. The first hero I want to touch on today is Crystal Maiden. She would be best described as kind of a ranged nuker slash glass cannon. She provides a lot of utility to her team, she does a lot of damage, and obviously like I said, she doesn't have a lot of health. One of the best thing about Crystal Maiden is her Arcane Horror. This is so cool. When you play a game of Dota 2 and you have a Crystal Maiden on your team, you can spam your abilities so much because of that mana region. I am so glad they brought that to Artifact. Getting 2 mana per lane can be seen as extremely strong. Can you imagine everything that you have is reduced by 2 mana? That means that you can get a lot more value per lane because of her. She doesn't even need to be in that lane. Now she does need to be alive though, which is the bad part of Crystal Maiden, she's a 2-5, but flavor wise that's great, she's super squishy in Dota 2 also. Therefore the transition has been well made for these two parts of her. She provides a utility she actually does in Dota, it feels very similar, and she's also super squishy. Her signature card is Frostbite. Now, it's not quite the same thing as the Dota 2 counterpart, but it's fairly close. In Dota 2, it's actually a dot. It also stuns the unit, so they can't move and they can't attack. Now, I'm surprised they didn't go for the dot because it's doable in a card game. You could have made it so the actual enemy takes like 2 damage for 3 turns or something like that. Maybe it would have been too slow or too underwhelming and they didn't want to go for that, but at least they kept the stun part which is the disarm. The strong part about disarm is that the enemies won't do damage but you can still do damage to them. This is fantastic to both keep her alive or serve another squishy blue hero that provides a lot of utility. With her passive, Frostbite comes at only 1 mana, so you can actually delay a lot, which is what you want to do when you're blue. Overall, fantastic transition. The second blue hero I want to touch on is Zeus, one of the most iconic Dota 2 characters. In Dota 2, he actually has very little mobility, kinda squishy, but he deals a ton of damage. You can see him as a walking lightning storm. His ability is Static Field, which is as close as can be of the actual Dota 2 counterpart. In both cases, whenever you're going to do a spell, you're going to damage your enemies. Every time you're going to do a blue spell, you're going to have that one piercing damage, which might not seem like a lot, but I'm sure there are some ways to make that super useful. Also, piercing is extremely important. Can you just imagine with Crystal Maiden on your team and Zeus, with cheap cards, you can already see how strong that can devolve. Also 3-7, really not that squishy for a uh, blue hero. Maybe that's a part that is a bit weird because in Dota 2 he's still super squishy, but not as much as like Crystal Maiden, so having more health actually kind of makes sense. Then we obviously have the iconic ult Thunder God's Wrath, which once again is pretty much the same thing. You deal damage to every enemy heroes no matter where they are. In this case, no matter what lane they're in. Also, the animation is fantastic. Just seeing that, I cannot wait to see all the animations from the cards and artifact, by the way. Overall, not a lot to say about Zeus because the feeling is just pinpoint on it. It feels like the same. Probably one of their best transition characters. The third one is one of my favorite Dota 2 heroes, Earthshaker. He's so fun to play. In Dota 2, you play Earthshaker as a support and you spam your Fisher to stun the enemies or, and you have multiple abilities that grant stuns on them. He's an extremely good laner and a good team fighter. He's also, he's also somewhat tanky in the game and in Artifact. As you can see, he's a 2-7. 7 Seven is in the higher tier for the blue heroes. His ability is Fisher, which is stun Earthshaker's enemy neighbors this round. In terms of effect, it's pretty much the same thing. The stun portion is actually in Dota 2 also. There's two differences though. First of all, Fisher is an iconic ability because it actually creates a wall and it blocks terrain. I don't know how you would do that in a card game. It would have been interesting if they made it so uh, the enemies hit by Fisher or around it cannot move or something similar to that or actually have a visual representation to isolate one of the enemy unit. That's not the biggest problem though. It's all about the cooldown. Four 
turn of cooldown is huge that probably means that you're gonna use fissure once in the whole game maybe twice sometimes now that's really different of the feel in dota 2 because your q actually is kind of spammable it's on a low cooldown and in team fights, you're often going to use it more than once. And in lane, it's kind of your go-to ability to spam it. So that feeling is a bit lost. They make it back though with Echo Slam, which is almost the same thing. The more enemies you have, the more damage it does. This is going to be a fantastic late game card. And it really feels as when you play Earthshaker in Dota 2. You're in trouble, there's a big team fight, and your ult is literally game changing. There's always this hope in Dota 2 that you're gonna have a huge Echo Slam and it's gonna turn the tide around. I am glad they decided to transfer one of the most interesting Dota 2 character, Meepo. Now what does Meepo do in Dota 2? He's a very unique hero. He does a lot of damage when you can stack your poofs and your Meepos, and he can also control the battlefield really well. That's what he does the best because in Dota, you can actually go do multiple jungle camps while remaining mid lane. It provides you with a lot of control. This comes at the expense that the hero is actually extremely hard to play. I think it's going to be very similar in Artifact. Being 4-5 makes him extremely squishy, which is kind of the same in Dota 2 also. He's not, he's not a tank. Meepo's strength in both games comes from the fact that he has Divided We Stand, which is his signature card. It has a very simple yet unique effect. You summon another Meepo. This means that you can have a total of 4 Meepos, which is the same as Dota 2. He gets extremely powerful because he will be able to control the battlefield, you'll be able to have him in multiple lanes. The problem though is Divided We Fall. When one Meepo dies, they all die. And if my information is correct, when one dies, they all give gold to your opponent, which is going to be a massive problem for the Meepo player. Therefore, it's going to be very difficult to make him work, I think. You'll have to be extremely good at knowing where to place him, knowing what to do with it, because it comes at a huge advantage but a huge downfall also which is something that that i feel transferred really well in both games it really has this high risk high reward feel his ability is what will make him really strong poof you can move meepos around which is what is going to get out of control and can help you not die all the time knowing where to place your hero is going to be extremely important kind of similar to dota 2 the more meepos you have, the better poof is, and the more damage you can do, the more advantages you get. It really feels like a snowball. The biggest problem in Artifact is contrary to Dota, where you can use your poof and basically have all your meepos at the same place pretty much instantly. In Artifact, because it's a card game, that is not doable. So even though you have mobility more than the majority of other heroes, which is true to his flavor and it, that's great. It's way slower, therefore the downside is a big one. In terms of flavor, I really feel like it's pretty damn close. The more meepos you get, the stronger it can be. Very hard to play, very hard to master, but super interesting. The last little hero I want to mention is Luna. Luna is a ranged carry, pusher, and nuker. She does a lot of damage. By the end of the game, she usually gets extremely strong because of some itemization and the way her abilities stack up so well. The adaptation is a bit weird though. Her ability Lucian Beam is not the same in the two games. It does one piercing damage and stack up your Eclipse. It doesn't stun, which is weird because in Dota 2, it's a brief stun and the whole charge stacking concept is just not present. I feel like in this case, it's almost as if the hero card was made and then they slapped Luna on top. It feels a bit different, it's not gonna play quite the same way. Although the actual Eclipse card does feel very similar. It is excellent for clearing creeps in both games and even excellent to hit multiple heroes. She's gonna get stronger and stronger as the game goes on because of the charges. It's gonna be on the players to know when to use those Eclipse. In terms of flavors, it's... It just sounds weird a bit to me. It just feels a bit weird to have her brief stun ability not being transferred and then having a completely new mechanic that is just not part of the hero. I wonder why they chose her. Having her ability to be a stun would have been better and maybe a fixed amount for the Eclipse would have been a better transition in terms of flavor. 
Maybe they didn't want to make it feel too close to like the Lich though. Which is always a challenge in card games. You don't want your heroes to feel too close. Even if it comes at this price of not having the exact transition from one game to another. Overall the feel is there but there's still this slight difference that I would like to know why Luna with those abilities. Because the concept could have been applied to almost any hero if it doesn't come from her anyway. I hope you enjoyed this second edition. Next time it's probably going to be green or black. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Thank you.